go from a fan of the show to star of the show. Send us your opinions now, and they could be discussed live on today's show. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. Good morning, Canada. Welcome to the Rod Peterson Show. And to Canadian sports fans around the world, welcome to episode number 172 of Canada's only live morning sports talk show. I'm your host, Rod Peterson. He is the co-host, um, just as good a hair, but a different guy, <laughs> Phil Andrews. <All> right. <laughs> Phil the Thrill, the voice of the Regina Pats, Phil Andrews, joining us here in the bunker for the rollout for Flooring stu- Superstores. Good morning, Philzy. It's good to be here, my friend. Um, it's been a little while. I would have you here every day if it was up to, to me. Man, I would sit here every day. There's no <laughs> doubt. This would be fun. I know that you <laughs> are, you're a big fan, as you said. You watch every show, and I appreciate it. It's good to have you on this side of the camera. Yeah, it's really good. I and, always enjoy being here. Well, um, it's Darren will be with us. He is on a conference call on the other side of the ho- uh, wall there. So as soon as he uh, finishes that up, he'll be joining us here in the bunker. But I know that Philzy and I can handle this for a good many hours. We'll be okay. Oh, yeah. A uh, lot of hockey today, but as I will get to our Elite Eight show topics, we're mixing in some football, too. And there's going to be some curling today. I'm excited about this. Here's our guest list. Phil Henry, who's obviously the voice of the Regina Pats. Darren Bombing from TSN Winnipeg will be with us. He's got a lot to discuss with us, not the least of which is the quarterback situation with the Bombers. Willie Jefferson, Willie or won't he? See what I did there? Yes, I understand. Uh, the report <laughs> is that five of nine CFL teams have been in touch with Willie Jefferson. I want to get Darren Bombing's take on that. And of course, the status of uh, one Dustin Buffalo. Do we ever see him in the NHL again? Uh, Trevor Redden, the voice of the Prince Albert Raiders. Shredden Redden's going to be with us to talk about the Red Hot Raiders. Good guy, good guy. He is a good guy, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I mentioned the curling. Braden Muscoe of the Saskatchewan Provincial Champion Men's Curling Team, the Matty Dunstone rink. He'll be with us on video chat. In the bunker will be Kirk Myers of the Myers Curling Team, the team the Dunstone rink beat for the provincial title to go to the Briar in Kingston. So they're all going to be on here together. Now, to the show topics, just hang on, Phil, before I get to you. Number one, obviously the biggest news in the last 24 hours here in the city, the U of R Rams parting ways with their head coach, Steve Bryce. The team announced on the website, ReginaRams.com, and via news release, apparently, I didn't get it, but that he had resigned for personal reasons. Uh, I got a tip that Steve Bryce had been fired and replaced on the interim by offensive coordinator uh, Mark McConkie. That's the tip I got. I'm sticking with it. So... The university has their statement. I've got my statement. And if anybody wants to delve into it further, I'm more than willing to talk about it. I'm just not going to talk about it here. I got the tip. I'm sticking with what I believe happened. Point two, as I mentioned, five of nine teams contacting Willie Jefferson, the uh, reigning defensive player of the year in the Canadian Football League. My question is, is one of the five the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? I'm guessing that they're not. We'll talk about that and why I believe that's the case. Point three, John Ryan signed a one-year deal with the Riders yesterday, but they turned around and released Marcus Thigpen, very popular kick returner and receiver, running back. Uh, we'll get to that today. Our, I'm going to bring Phil in on this. Four, point four, our Wednesday poll results were these. The question was, do you think Alex Ovechkin will catch Wayne Gretzky for the career goal scoring record in the NHL? Uh, Wayne's at 894, Ovi's at 698. So basically 200 goals to get by the time he's done. And the majority of people said no. I, I think he's got a good shot. I mean, he's going to score 50 this year. He's going to get to over 700. He's, so maybe he scores 40 another couple of years. And, and then, I mean, if he plays, and I know he's going to decline, but you start getting 20 a year... <laughs> you look at he get into his early 40s. I mean, it's possible. It's it's possible. I, I'm not saying he will, but I, I think there's a, a better than 50-50 shot that he can. What do. would you vote, yes or no? I hope yes. I hope yes. No. Okay, I vote <laughs> What I do you vote think's yes. going to happen? I'll vote yes. I'll vote yes. I voted yes, too. Yeah. And the thing was, until I looked at this and my daughter's boyfriend and I got crunching the numbers on it, I realized, wait a minute. It's not that far off. It probably will happen based on, could we not see Obi playing to 45? Exactly. Really? And that's why. And, and, you know, he continues at this pace at 40, 50 a year for two, three more years. Then you're only talking about 50, 60 goals. 
and maybe in three years he can get that. He's basically 200 goals shy, so he would have to average 50 goals a season over the next four years. And the way he's going, well, he's averaged 40-plus the last four. He's incredible. So why would you not think that he will break it? And if that's the case, he will have earned it. But like I said, I don't like seeing any of Wayne's 37 records fall and that's a biggie. Yeah. So I've never really liked Ovechkin, and I don't really care for Russians. Well, Although I know you love them. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I've you enjoyed, love the ones you know. I love the ones I know. There's yeah. no doubt. But uh, I think, I mean, I'm with you that I mean, everybody in Canada was a big Wayne fan growing up. I, I mean, but the fact that we can actually talk about one of these records being broken when there was never a thought that it would ever happen. I think is awesome. It's awesome for the game that we can actually have this conversation that somebody could be the greatest goal scorer of all time that isn't 99. I'm totally with you, but if he got to 893 and then <laughs> yeah. I'd be good. Oh, I got to retire now. Uh, There's right. No way. Here's one for you watching ESPN this morning. I don't really understand what's going on with Antonio Brown, but my uh, point five of the Elite Eight show topics here is would you sign Antonio Brown? Doesn't it sound completely ridiculous that you would even ask that question but that's the question this morning on ESPN's get up they had an interview with Antonio Brown with Josina Anderson she asked if he needs mental health assistance from if I'm paraphrasing right he he dodged that answer dodged the question and said I owe the entire NFL an apology so I'll be put to you would you sign Antonio Brown because I don't think I would without a list of assurances like I I I'm I'm like you, and I'm big on second chances. And I, I think he's probably had more than a couple. Right. There's no doubt. But I truly believe there's a road back for Antonio Brown. And because of the talent that he possesses, someone's going to give him another chance. I, I think they will, if there are those assurances with it. Because, I, I mean, he can come back from, from whatever it is that, that has caused him to be an absolute lunatic, it seems, over the last mm -hmm. year and a half. And because he's that good... He'll be back in the NFL, I think. Uh, well, well uh, this yeah. whole investigation stuff aside, if I'm talking just about the way that he's handled himself with his teams and on all that type of stuff, th that investigation into that uh, I mean, is a different thing that could cause him to never be signed. But in terms of the other stuff, if you know, if he can find a way to you know get back on track, someone will give him a contract. Well, if you're watching it as closely as I am, I'm not sure everybody's watching it as closely as I am. From the mental health aspect, from the pro football aspect, I'm watching it very closely. It's not as open and shut as giving him a contract. No. He's got he's got charges he's facing. He's got fines. He's got unpaid bills. He's got a litany of charges oh, he's facing. So much stuff. So it's not just about signing him and bringing him into your locker room. And I am absolutely about second chances. But I tell you what, the CFL really did it right with Johnny Manziel when the commissioner said, listen, we'll bring Johnny Manziel into the league, but you need to meet these conditions. Mm -hmm. And once it was found that Johnny broke it, you're out. Who can argue with that? That's, that's how you have to do it. There's no doubt. If you're dealing with somebody like that, I mean, that's how you have to. I mean, you can't just, here's a lot of money and just come play without any type of structure or something that you have to meet these certain standards. I mean, that, that has to be the case for, for AB if he's come back. It's funny you said he's a, he's a lunatic because it depends what your definition is. I had an NFL coach call me. He's probably listening right now. Called me from the States about AB. And he goes, I think he's got mental problems. I'm like, yes! <laughs> yes, he does! Can we get the man some help, please? What was the first clue? Like, yeah, uh, I know, but if you don't understand or you're not trained in it, you would look at this guy and say, what's wrong? And then, well, I know exactly what's wrong with him. I'm waiting for him to open up and say, yeah, take me. Fix me. But he's nowhere near doing that yet. And here's a funny story. Last week, uh, last Wednesday, a week ago yesterday, Clint Malarchuk was in town. Very close friend of mine. Three times near-death experiences, first of which was the skate blade to the neck. Clint Malarchuk, everybody knows his name, NHL All-Star goalie. He wrote a book called The Crazy Game. And it was about his life. And I honestly thought when I saw the, the, the book, it was about being a goalie. You would have to be crazy yeah. to be a goalie. Then I start thumbing through. Oh, no. It's about all his mental health issues yeah. from his early as uh, elementary school. And it was his life story. I know a lot of people, including Kelly Rudy, who told me he only got a couple pages into the book and had to close it, couldn't finish it. It was that disturbing of what Clint's mm -hmm. life was. So as I'm at this event with Clint, because he called, he had his driver call me. And he said, would you come? Clint said he'd feel a lot better if you were at, in the crowd tonight at his, at his thing. So I went. The U.S. version of Clint's book, they've changed the title. They've taken crazy off the title. 
And I can't even, I think it's like inches away from death. Because they don't like the connotation of the term crazy. I don't know how you feel about that. Because Clint, Clint's like, ah, it's the crazy game. He doesn't, he doesn't care. It was the mental health advocates in the United States that said, we can't have a book called The Crazy Game. That blows my mind. <laughs> Not I mean, the guy to wrote me, the it book, doesn't. Let him write the title. Like I don't, I don't know. I know. And if it was his crazy, who are you to tell him that it wasn't? I don't know. I know. So just let that percolate a little bit. But if you want to, but that's the thing. You want to say Antonio Brown's a lunatic? Why not? He's acting like a lunatic. Yes. So until that changes or crazy, call me crazy. Whatever. You wouldn't be the first. I probably am. <laughs> don't bother me. Say whatever you want. Moving on. Sorry, I got oh, sidetracked there. I like it. Uh, point six, two days away from the Saskatchewan Rush game day. They're home to the Colorado Mammoth on Saturday night. Everybody's talking about this. Hey, your hometown's going to be popping. I'm yeah. going up there right after the show today. We got tomorrow night, <laughs> Kinsman dinner. Get your tickets if you haven't yet. It's really easy. Go on Twitter, search Saskatoon Kinsman, or go to kinsmandinner.com and buy your tickets to come up and see. I got to think. One of these will resonate with you folks. Martin Broder, Eddie Belfour, Grant Fear, Bernie Perrant, Glenn Hall, Brett Lather, Charleston Hughes. It's awesome. All, it's awesome. Every year they have just it's the biggest dinner of the list, year. Best them. list of guys you could ever think of. Yeah. And so I'd go hang out with Ed Belfour for sure. Well, for My the favorite first goalie of all time. Is he? Oh, the Eagle? Sure. Man, when I was a kid and he got traded to the Leafs and he was outstanding at the end of his career and I mean, they went to playoffs and they went run to the conference final the one year with Matt Sundin favorite goalie for sure wow more yeah. than Cujo more, more than, Cujo. than any of those guys I loved Eddie yep well I've never I don't think I've I don't think I've ever met Eddie so I'm looking forward to being with him and I'm not going to tell you what my role is anybody that's of the 2,000 people that are there you'll find out when I get there what I'm going to be doing but I will be with those guys and I'm very much looking forward to that and then and then the rush game the next day. Like Saskatoon's the place to be this weekend, as far as I'm concerned. They got the mammoth in town. Uh, 7.7 7 of the Elite Eight show type uh, topics. The Pats win at Saskatoon last night. I think it deserves a ring of the bell. I heard you won a lunch. Or I won yeah. another lunch off DuPont. <laughs> We're racking them up, Darren. Like, what are we going to do? Go to the Golden Corral for this and hit them all in one? Yes. Uh, you had two plates? That's two. <laughs> That's why it's two lunches right there. Uh, you understand my love for the Regina Pats. For sure. It's my favorite team on the planet. Mine too. But should be. They're paying you. Yeah. I'm just going. You know, it, it was my first ever favorite team. It, it is my favorite team and will always be my favorite team. And the Pats have won three in a row, and yeah. I watched it. And th actually, I heard you. I was driving home from our ball game, and you sounded very – you had a pep in your step last night too. Yeah, I, I mean, they're, I, I keep going back. I mean, you look at this team, and they started 1-10, and, and it was a, a tough start. But since then, they're only game under 500. Like, they've turned this season around, and a lot of credit goes to you know, Dave Struish and, and Brad Haroff and what John Paddock's done with this roster and, you know, making some changes and, and building for the future but still being very competitive now. And, you know, they're in every game. Uh, I mean, other than the Lethbridge game last weekend, Friday, and then the, the one Portland game on the U.S. trip, since Christmas, uh, they've been incredible at home and in every game and working hard. And so they're, they're a fun team to watch. They're, I they're find them home. very entertaining. Yep, for sure. Um, I got to pause and read some of the Facebook comments that have come in from Ross Kidd. It says, hello from Phoenix. Hello, Ross. Hi, Ross. If you're a first-time viewer, welcome. Uh, pull up a chair. Stay a while. Pour yourself a coffee. From Casey Jones, he says, Can you believe I found you on YouTube while vacationing in Thailand? <laughs> it's the internet. How do I answer that? It's the internet. You I guess I can't really believe that he found us on YouTube while <laughs> vacationing incredible. in Thailand. That's awesome. Darren's dream is that on, on the YouTube page where it says, Videos you may notice or whatever you may like, yeah. that will come up on the main page. It started to happen a little bit. Awesome. So I don't know how any of this is going to work. I just show up and talk for two hours. Randy Nickel writes in, and he says, Man, Phil the Thrill can drive a golf ball. Wickenheiser Classic was great. I bet you can smack it, eh, Phil? Yeah, that, that's where I uh, thrive on the golf course. I can get it there, but uh, <laughs> the short game in and around the greens where I, where I struggle, and that's why I'm a 12 handicap. That's why you love your... Uh, job so much. I mean, hockey is a great job. You got, you got hockey all winter and then you 
Nice summer. Break. Golf all summer. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's perfect. Or per- as much as my wife will let me in. It's a great life. Uh, from Jason Bicek, he says, if the Clinton Malarchuk article in the Players' Tribune is any indication, it should be a great book. Uh, it's scary. It's not for the faint of heart, but it's Clint's life. And I'll just say one more, because I... You know how much I work in the field of recovery, so sometimes I'm getting desensitized to these stories. But some lady the other day said, Clint Malarchuk, who's Clint Malarchuk? Tell me about Clint Malarchuk. And I said, well, he had a skate to the throat. He almost mm-hmm. died on the ice. Three years later, his heart stopped from an opioid uh, overdose that he happened to combine with a bottle of scotch. So that was his second near-death yeah. experience. And then the third was uh, in the mid-2000s, he tried to kill himself, shot himself under the chin. The bullet lodged in his cranium. It was right in front of his wife. And he said to her, look what you made me do. And then tried to tell her not to call 911 because he would never work in the NHL again. And uh, she called 911 and put yeah. him in treatment. But I'll tell you a hilarious story, and then we'll break. I know that's very gory stuff, but Clint just talks about it like it's anything, and that's what the recovery world is. He's recovered, or he's recovering. But he spent three days in a mental hospital in Reno, Nevada, because he was arrested, tried to fight some cops. His wife was bringing him track suits into the jail in Reno, the mental health mm-hmm. facility. You're looking at me so stone cold. Oh. This is going to get funny, believe me. It doesn't sound funny. It gets funny. <laughs> You know how we all have a million track suits when yeah. you work in sports? Oh, too many. So Clint Clint worked, well, he played for the Sabres and the Capitals and the Nordiques, and he coached with the Flames and the Florida Panthers and a lot of teams. So he had a lot yeah. of track suits. So he said he was handing these track suits out to the other people in the mental institution. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> even Doug's laughing at that over there on the couch. We have a live studio audience here. So he said, he left. He's like, hey, wish you guys well. Like he went home. And he says, now there's people struggling in the arena wearing these track suits. And he was like, I can just imagine a guy coming up, pushing a shopping cart. Put the camera over here. Him saying, oh, you played for the Sabres? Really? I played for the Panthers. <laughs> I swear. It's the truth. <laughs> right. Clint's story, not mine. But oh, you good. give away these track suits and uh, the, you never know where they're going to end up, basically. Yeah. And lastly, uh, point eight of the Elite Eight, Leafs get a goalie. In 60 seconds or less, how do you feel about the big trade, your team pull? Big Leafs fan over here. Uh, I think it's awesome. Uh, uh, Jack Campbell isn't, for me, the biggest piece of the trade. Uh, I mean, he's going to be a backup to Freddie Anderson and uh, hopefully a serviceable one and do better than Michael Hutchison did. But for me, Kyle Clifford coming over and bringing some grit to that lineup that has absolutely none. Uh, I mean, they are as soft as it gets. And so for him to come, that's huge for me to play on a fourth line, go out there and, and you know, pound some people. Uh, I like that part of the trade for sure. Well, uh, we'll get into that more as the day progresses. This is the rollout for flooring superstores. Can you put the comment up, please, from Trent in Norway so I can read the full thing, boys, whether it be on my monitor here or on the big screen? Trent in Norway watches in, uh, writes in, Great to see the Prince Albert Raiders on top of the Eastern Division. Hope the rush sell out on the weekend. Great to see Phil the Thrill on the show. Have a good one back home. That is Trent in Norway. From Norway. You got fans in Norway. On the way today. Hey? I think I made it. (laughs) Yeah, you've made it. You've made it. Darren Bombing of TSN Winnipeg, Trevor Redden, the voice of the Prince Albert Raiders, uh, and uh, curling greats Braden Muscoey and Kirk Myers. Again, this has been the rollout for Flooring Superstars, and we'll be right back. It's the Rod Peterson Show on Facebook Live and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.